So this is the iPhone SE, and yeah, I know, by now, you know pretty much everything there is to know about the iPhone SE. But instead of, you know, thinking about it, I decided to pick one up and actually switch to it from my iPhone 11 Pro. So, you know, in a lot of ways, that's a big downgrade. But in using this, I think I've learned a lot, not only about the phone, but just Apple's ecosystem in general. And I think Apple has a pretty big opportunity on their hands. But this, I think Apple honestly has one of the best deals out there right now. And not because it gives you every feature for a good price, but for that price of $400, it gives you what I think a lot of the budget-minded people are looking for. And you really have to think, you know, what is the iPhone SE for? Why does this actually exist? I've mentioned it before and I'll mention it again. I think it's for those people who want an affordable phone or those people who want the smallest phone. And you know, this 2020 version of the iPhone SE does that in a little bit of a different way than the original, but it still offers up that budget phone. And for Apple, why would they want a budget phone? And you know, obviously that's a simple answer. They want more people to buy iPhones and more people to get into the Apple ecosystem. So when Apple announced this phone, you know, I was looking at, you know, other products that Apple has, and I realized that Apple can offer the ultimate Apple ecosystem starter kit. So right now for $760, which is just a little bit more than what you're paying for the brand new iPhone 11, not the 11 Pro, but the 11. You can get an iPhone SE, brand new. You can get a brand new Apple Watch Series 3, which Apple still sells. And you can get a brand new pair of AirPods all together for basically the same price as just an iPhone 11. And these all give you an excellent experience. It's the perfect way to jump into the Apple ecosystem for, you know, a more budget price. I really like this iPhone SE. I think, you know, budget phones always have this stigma of like, you're getting the budget phone because you can't afford the more expensive one. And sometimes that is the case, but with the iPhone SE, you don't have to feel that way. You could genuinely get this phone because it's the phone that you want, not the phone that you're settling for. I really love small phones, and while this is, I wouldn't say a small phone, it's definitely smaller than I was expecting it to be. On paper, it's not that much different than the iPhone 11 Pro, but it actually feels much smaller and thinner, and it, it feels nice. You kind of forget how big and thick Apple has made the latest iPhones, which is a good thing for things like battery life, but for just the feeling in your phone, having this sleek, thin iPhone it is really nice. And yeah, things like the screen are definitely not that great. I can see the fuzziness there. The color and the blacks, they're all fine. And you know, it's a fine screen. Apple does some of the best LCDs out there, so it's not a bad screen. It's just, you know, I could tell coming from the iPhone 11 Pro. And things like Touch ID are great, especially right now if you have to wear a mask. A fingerprint sensor is coming in real handy. And besides that, you know, biometrics are important these days, so you don't have to enter your passcode all the time. And Touch ID is on par with Face ID in terms of its effectiveness. The camera, I think, is one of the biggest selling points for a phone. And again, when you're looking at a budget phone, a lot of times that's the one thing you're gonna have to sacrifice. But that's not the case with the iPhone SE. It doesn't perform as well as the more expensive counterparts, which you wouldn't really expect it to, but it's so close that honestly, it's kind of negligible in most situations. And of course, the reason why the iPhone SE is so important is that processor. The A13 processor is speedy, it's fast, it's everything you expect from a modern iPhone, even though it's in this smaller phone. But most importantly with that, you're getting all your updates. So you could buy this phone today and you know, in four years, it's still going to get the latest updates. Now, will it perform all that well? Well, that remains to be seen, but at the very least, it will be supported. And you can't say that for really any other non-iPhone out there. And all of that is important because from Apple's perspective, you know, they want people to buy iPhones. And if the cheapest iPhone is the one that a lot of people are going to buy and possibly buy as their first iPhone, you need to give them a good experience. And the iPhone SE delivers on that. So using this as kind of the brain, the hub of the Apple ecosystem starter kit, you're starting in a pretty good place. I think a lot of people forget that the Apple Watch Series 3 is still for sale, brand new from Apple. You can go to their site and buy one right from them. And the Apple Watch is interesting because it's one case where the newer versions, sure, they're better in a few different ways, but you're not really getting that much more out of them. The Apple Watch Series 3 still gives you a speedy processor. It's one of the first that actually was usable and speedy. It doesn't have that larger screen that you get with the 4 or 5, but the screen is still plenty usable and responsive. Plus, if you want, you can still get LTE, which is something that I actually use on my Apple 
watch all the time. It has pretty much all of those features that you want, the health tracking. It doesn't have EKG, but it has most everything that you're looking for when you think of an Apple Watch. And since Apple has done a, you know, actually decent job, surprisingly, of making everything cross compatible, you can get the new watch bands, you can buy third party, and it all works with that Series 3 with no issues. If I didn't have the Series 4, I would still be using the Series 3, which is what I had before that. And honestly, I don't think I would really be missing on much. And if you bought the Series 3 today, it would still last you quite a few years. Real quick, before we continue, I want to thank this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers classes that help you continue learning in many different creative fields. So illustration, design, photography, business, I mean, really anything you can think of that makes you want to do and create, Skillshare has a class for you. And especially in a time like right now, a lot of us are stuck at home with maybe a little bit more extra time. So you don't want to let that slide. Put it to good use and maybe learn something new. Skillshare is constantly offering new classes. There's no ads specifically curated for learning. And they offer these classes starting at less than $10 a month. So if this is something that sounds interesting to you, check out the link down in the description. The first 1,000 of you will get two free months of Skillshare Premium. So don't hesitate, check it out and start learning. AirPods, I think, are kind of the easiest to recommend out of the bunch. And a lot of people want them, a lot of people have them, and a lot of people like them, including myself. Now, I've talked a good amount about AirPods recently, but I'm convinced that this first design generation of AirPods is still kind of better than what you get with the AirPods Pro. They don't have all the features like noise cancellation and the different tips and the different design, but you're getting the important stuff. So it still seamlessly works with all of your devices. If you have a phone, it instantly connects. If you have an iPad, you can switch to it really easily. All that's great. The battery life is excellent. You know, five hours on the buds themselves, plus an extra 24 with the case and that case. It's very small, portable. I mean, everyone knows what AirPods are at this point. So you can get all three of these products for almost the same price as what you'd get for the latest iPhone 11 flagship. But I think Apple really should consider bundling these products together as a starter kit. Now, this isn't something they've never done before. They have the back to school Mac program. So you would buy a MacBook. They would give you in the past an iPod or now they'll give you Beats. They have bundles that they've done before. And this wouldn't make a ton of sense because again, I think the purpose of the iPhone SE is to hook new users. So say I bought this Apple ecosystem starter kit. Okay, the phone is great and the watch is great and the AirPods are great. Okay, that's all fine. Maybe next year I'm like, well, maybe I'm ready to upgrade to a new phone. Well, you know, Android phones have been looking pretty good. Maybe I'll get that. Ah, crap, my Apple Watch won't work there. Well, maybe I don't want my Apple Watch. I wanna upgrade it to something else. Well, there's not that many options out there and the ones that do definitely aren't integrated with iOS as well as the Apple Watch. So that you're a little dissuaded from doing. AirPods is probably the easiest to replace. You can get something like the Galaxy Buds, which are great. But again, it's that same thing. It's not as well integrated, so you can do it, but AirPods are not any worse than any other pair of wireless headphones, really. So Apple will probably have that person hooked. They'll get a new iPhone because they have that watch that they need it to connect to. And then once they have that new phone, the new watch comes out and they're like, oh, well, this one's getting maybe a little old. I'll upgrade my watch. And the cycle just continues. It's the same way everyone who is in this same situation got trapped in the first place. The difference now is that the price is so low for all these products. There's a real incentive to advertise this. And I think Apple could just make a killing with this. Now, yes, of course, other companies have similarly decent deals. You can get like the Samsung A51 for 400 bucks, same price as the iPhone SE. You can get Galaxy Buds instead of AirPods. You can Samsung Watch instead of the Apple Watch. There are different ways to kind of switch this together, but it's different for Apple's purposes, at least. And also, of course, this doesn't really apply to other countries. I know the phone is a lot more expensive in other places. So uh, Apple, if you're listening, I'd like my commission whenever you announce this new bundled deal. But until then, what do you think? Is this something that makes sense? I, I would like to actually see Apple do more bundles of different products. Like if you think about it, yeah, this might be the budget bundle, but you could do a more pro bundle with the iPhone 11 Pro, AirPods Pro, the Apple Watch Series 5 with LTE or something. You know, you can have a high level one. It'd be interesting to maybe see, you know, you buy all these different products at one time, but maybe there's like a $100 $50 discount on them. I think there's money to be made here. But luckily, these are all pretty great products. I've been using the iPhone SE as my main phone since it came out and I'm not really missing too much. It's a great phone. I have no problem recommending it, but I think I think there's an opportunity here.